Hi, this is Melissa with Blockchain WTF, and today we are going to talk about decentralized storage. In order to have a fully decentralized blockchain ecosystem, we need to have decentralized storage. Otherwise, we're still relying on a centralized server with one single point of failure. Oh my God, Morty, what did you do? You killed the oh Simpsons, God, Morty! No. With the Equifax data breach and numerous other data breaches, they all could have had different outcomes. Even if using a centralized server, the individual users had control over their data. The current way to use cloud storage allows you to store and instantly access your data on remote servers, but these servers are just hardware sitting in a server warehouse. This differs from decentralized storage that has nodes running on multiple computers in multiple locations. The cloud storage market is estimated to reach 89 billion by 2022, quite a jump from the 31 billion in 2017. Microsoft, Amazon, IBM, Salesforce.com, and SAP are all the top five cloud storage vendors with Google and Oracle right behind. So even though using Google Drive is super convenient, centralized storage, the host can monitor, censor, disclose data to third parties, or your data could even be lost, altered, or scrambled. Decentralized storage networks run open source software so anyone can look into how they operate. These options could potentially employ millions of server devices instead of a few hundred or thousand. By increasing the amount of competition, this decreases the price. Federated storage is the collection of autonomous storage resources governed by a common management system that provides rules about how data is stored, managed, and migrated throughout the storage network. The benefit of federated storage is that you can diversify on centralized servers as a placeholder for decentralization. Most people upload their files on Google Drive, but what if something happens to that file? If you had uploaded on five different versions of Google Drive, five different platforms, you would be able to prove the information was tampered with on one of them by it not being tampered with on the other four. This is just a short-term strategy as these companies could all get absorbed into larger companies uh, and then you no longer have a decentralized strategy. So what are some of the projects that are working in the crypto space? Well, there's MetaNet BSV. MetaNet is a unique project that is trying to power the internet on Bitcoin SV's blockchain. It's a little different than the other decentralized storage projects in the space because it aims to have the internet become a sidechain to the Bitcoin SV blockchain. Craig Wright has a Medium post elaborating the details in the system they propose, but essentially a separate key is calculated for each file. When the key and associated Bitcoin address are used to calculate a file address in the Bitcoin blockchain, the file ownership remains pseudo-anonymous. Users can also create firewalls and partitions using the method 42 process. They can encrypt each file separately and share each file in whole or in parts, and they can even sell access to the files. MadeSafe. MadeSafe stands for Massive Array of Internet Disks, Secure Access for Everyone. Quite the acronym, right? <laughs> but these guys are the OGs in the data storage space. This project has been under development for more than a decade now and is the world's first autonomous data network. The SAFE network has clients and farmers. Farmers take care of the data on the network by providing disk space, computing power and uptime, and clients can use the network uploading data using dApps or browsing. The SAFE network aims to create the world's first fully autonomous decentralized data network, preventing the network from being blocked, controlled, or turned off. Many are excited about MadeSafe, but as they haven't launched yet, they're also forced to look at alternative solutions short term. Filecoin has their own blockchain and they utilize mining. They are working on creating a free marketplace for storage of data and rent of extra disk space. IPFS is the backbone of the Filecoin system. Currently, the internet works off a location-based addressing, and these URLs are pointed to certain servers around the world. IPFS serves information based on what the information is as opposed to where it is located. Their routing algorithm allows you to choose where you get your content from, and you can set your privacy of the peers or nodes that you trust. Swarm runs on top of Ethereum's existing smart contract infrastructure, but uses an additional proof of custody operation to scan and repair data over time when needed. Rather than use new protocols such as IPFS, Swarm offers federated HTTPS endpoints to allow users to make calls to a familiar API interface and then upload and download files. Swarm is still in the proof of concept stage and is not fully operational, but you can try out their command line utilities in a simulated environment 
Sia actually predates much of the buzz in this market. It was launched in early 2013 out of an MIT hack event and uses proof of storage algorithm and smart contracts for the storage, rental, and proof of work for validating transactions and produce mining hardware for mining Sia coins. In the Sia ecosystem, storage contracts are used which require the provider to stake a fixed amount of tokens in exchange for the privilege of storing files. While they store the file, the provider must consistently upload proof of storage to the blockchain to verify their participation. Basically, you have to prove that on your 250 gigabyte computer, you kept, let's say, 30 gigabytes available for storage that you said you would. You're basically being a landlord with your storage, and if you fulfill your data lease, you are rewarded and receive fees from the end user. If the host loses the fees, they won't get paid, plus their collateral is gone too. The storage cloud platform, with a J, lets users rent storage from their peers on this network. All network transactions are conducted in storage as crypto asset storage, which is a token launched on the Ethereum blockchain in 2014. Storage's technology is different. It revolves around file sharing similar to torrents. It separates parts of the file to users in the network. And then when a user wants the file, they request it and storage uses a distributed hash table to locate all the shards and piece them together. So the files are encrypted before sharing, and then the user uploading it has their own private key to confirm the ownership. Wow, right? Decentralized storage still has a long way to go before it is sustainable and easy enough for mainstream users to participate, but we're working on it. Know of any other cool platforms in the space? Throw it down below. Don't forget to leave us a comment, hit the like button and subscribe, and the bell for notifications. Thanks for watching.